And and this is my favorite. Wiz Air. <laughs> <laughs> what a name. Wiz Air. Actually, I pink was... Pink planes. Yeah. Bright pink yeah, planes. I was Amazing. In, welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Traveler. This is sponsored by Executive Travel. Every week, we bring you the top news in the travel industry. This week, we have a special edition because we have with us a special guest. Ann Fulby Olson, who runs our group department with the Women of the Midwest, is a founder of the Women of the Midwest, is joining us. I'm Steve Glenn. Ann, welcome. We're glad you're Thank back you. in Lincoln. Tell us where you're coming from. This time, I, well, I left Athens, of course. I flew via Copenhagen. I had a few days with my mother. Your mother? And then I flew here with uh, on KLM via Amsterdam um, two days ago. Okay, and you flew in. You spend time the next two or three weeks. What do you do? What you're so channel? we are still um, working on next year's um, group tours. So escorted tours. 2025. Um, 2025. Tours. Yep. We've got 56 groups going. So it's really exciting domestic and international tours. Um, so that's what we're working on now with the team. Um, a lot of women of the Midwest, of course. Um, I have a lot of travel presentations while I'm in town. Good. I am presenting a um, footstep of Apostle Paul here in, at a church, and I'm also going to um, the National Guard Museum in Seward and presenting our liberation tour. And we're going to talk about that at the we end are. of the show. Yep. Now, before we get going into our weekly travel alert list, tell us, how, what's the pulse of travel in Europe right now? Busy. <laughs> it is busy. Well, Greece is busy, busy, right? It's busy, busy. Um, I think we have a busier year than ever. Than I, last year? Yes. I mean, my yeah. gosh, you I guys I think were... we've been affected a little bit by the, the, the Holy Land as well, like oh. trips to the Holy Land. So a lot of people are moving into Europe instead. Well, we did that. We had a trip going to Israel that yes. you moved to Greece yes. to do the Apostle Paul tour, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah, for... yeah, yeah. So... But the trend is very busy. I went through Amsterdam Airport um, here the, to, the day before yesterday. Super busy, even very early in the morning. Um, really? People are just traveling, jumping on a plane, you know, just for having breakfast somewhere and coming back. I know. I was traveling back from Italy. I had a 6.30 flight. They say get there three hours in advance. Can you imagine me getting to an airport at 3.30 in the morning? Never. Never, but <laughs> I did. Okay, and it was... It was busy. Yes. And the coffee shops were full. People yeah. were out. Lines. There were lines uh, in, to uh, register, and, and uh, so I was just I was pretty amazed that, that early in the morning there's that many people up and about. So, yeah, it's great to have you uh, with us. We're going to get started now on this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert. What do you say? Should we go? Come. Which means. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> The first headline on this week's Weekly Travel Alert, which reads, Big news, United Airlines now allows pooling of miles. Now, Ann, historically, if I have a United Airlines Mileage Plus account and I have 10,000 miles, that's not enough to get a free airline ticket. And if I'm not spending or flying on United Airlines, I basically sit on that for years and years. Mm -hmm. Now, United came out with one of the first in the... The, in the U.S. of basically saying, we're going to let you pool those miles with up to five other people. So now you can literally say, let's go find family members or friends. Perhaps they might have 10,000 or 10,000 more, get to 30,000, use that for a free airline ticket. That's great news. That's fantastic. And we're, we're thinking and hoping that perhaps Delta an American might follow up with that. Also, I was thinking this morning one of the great advantages would be pooling miles for donations to nonprofits, for fundraisers, and other things. Yeah. So I sense this is going to be big news for a lot of people that want to help other people with travel. So that's number one. Number two on this week's weekly travel alert reads as follows. I bet you've never heard of many of these airlines. Now, Anne, you're, <laughs> you're our European expert, and yeah. I'm going to read the list of airlines that I got. I Googled which fl airlines travel from Rome, okay. the Rome airport. All right. And if you've heard of them, you do this, okay. thumbs up. If you've flown on them, then do a thumbs up. And I'll do the same thing. So here we go. Here's the list. 
We're going to start off with Aegean Airlines. Have you heard of them? Okay. Have you flown on them? Okay. Lots of times. Okay. You like them? Greek Airline. Um, actually nominated um, the best European carrier for many, many years in a row. Good. They're amazing. Great okay. service. Mm -hmm. Air Baltic. Have you heard of them? Yes. Okay, have you flown them? Uh, just last week, okay. again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've never flown them. Air Europa. Air Europa, I've heard of them. I've not flown them. That's funny, because I'm European and I haven't heard about them Okay, ever. all right. The next one know. is Air France. Okay. Heard them, flown them. Okay, there we go. How about Air Malta? I not heard them, not flown them. Have you flown them? Nope. Okay. Here we go. Albastar. Never heard of them. Never flown them. Same here. Okay. Eurowings. Heard them, but not flown them. Have flown with them. You have. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a sister company of Lufthansa, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. The next one is Iberia. Mm -hmm. I've heard them, and I've flown them. I actually just flew them a couple weeks ago. Uh -huh. And... Um, Next, we have ITA. Now, ITA. I've, ITA yeah. Well, I call it ITA. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have blue planes, right? So I've they heard do. them, and, but I haven't flown them. It is the uh, new version of Alitalia, so the Italian Airlines. The old yeah. Italian, Italian Airlines. Yeah. Okay. KLM, oh, heard yes. them, flown them. You actually Two flew them ago. recently. Yeah. yeah. Great, great, great airline. I have a good business class. Oh, it's wonderful. Okay. Then we have Luxair. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard of them. I haven't flown them. I've Have you flown, flown on them too? Oh, really? oh yes, okay, on man. a Zurich flight. Yep. Oh, Norwegian. I've heard of them. Yep. Never flown on them. Both here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ryanair. Of course, I heard on them. They're gigantic, but I have never flown them. Same here. No, I have flown them once, just once. Oh, you did? Oh. Yeah, and it was messy because they charge you for baggage. They charge yeah. you for seats. They charge you if you have to go to the bathroom. They almost charge you for something there. I know. It's a mess. Yeah, but they're one of the biggest in all of Europe, aren't they? Yeah, they're like a city hopper kind of thing. They're yeah. all everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how about uh, TAP TAP, TAP Portuguese. Portugal? Yeah. yeah, heard about them. Flown yeah, heard them. them. Yeah. I haven't flown them. Great airline. Uh, Voltaire. Voltaire, yes. Heard about them? I've never, never heard flown of them. on them, though. Okay. Yeah, Voltaire, oh, yes. How about Vueling Airline? Never heard of them. Welling. Welling, Spanish. Oh, it's uh, a V. It's V-U-E-L-I-N-G. Yeah, it's pronounced Welling. Welling. Um, it's a charter uh, company, Spanish, but very nice uh, uh, flights, okay. very good planes. And, and this is my favorite, Wiz Air. <laughs> <laughs> what a name, Wizz Air. Actually, I pink was... Pink planes, bright yeah, pink planes, yeah, I was amazing. In the, I was in the Rome airport, and they had a massive number of people yeah, there. They must yeah. have been multiple flights. Oh, yes. so, so that's there was like a list of uh, 17 different airlines. <clears throat> have you heard about Lauda Air ever? No. Nope. Lauda Air? Mm -hmm. No. It's a Swiss-based uh, uh, airline, Niki Lauda, the Formula One race driver yeah I'm, um, not, I'm not a had a guy. um i know you're uh, not you're no. fast though but you're uh, not Formula uh -huh. One. Uh -huh. yeah, so right. i thought it was interesting americans really don't know much about european airlines but if you're going to travel in europe a lot of these intercity flights are all done by these low-cost carriers not the right. lufthansa's of the world or air france's of the world mostly some of these smaller airlines do the point to point you know the 49 59 dollar one-way trip yeah. so thanks for your european but I, think, I think it's like what you said steve in your first uh, article um of this weekly travel alert i think that people tend to compared to the past jump on a plane and fly somewhere where we used to go in the car, car but yeah. now we just take a plane and we will go and have um english breakfast and come back home again because it's like the 49 dollar fare so or 50 yeah. euros you know so. i gotta admit i did a crazy thing once i wanted to fly on the the emirates 380 okay mm -hmm. and aerobus 380 it's a double decker and they were flying out of los angeles direct to dubai and i i had bit, i had frequent flyer miles i flew to los angeles flew all the way to dubai went up and had lunch on the uh, burj al al the tallest building in the world 
had a nice weekend in Dubai and flew home. I mean, that talking about crazy. That's uh, crazy. But I, I I'm had not to, surprised, Steve. Uh, I had to try it. <laughs> okay, number three on this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert, uh, sponsored by Executive Travel. You've got to visit our website, www.executivetravel.com. And also, you've got uh, uh, Women of the Midwest. Dot okay. com, right? Yes. So that people can visit that for all the women tours that you, you host. The third headline of this week's Weekly Travel Alert reads, Electric vehicles or EVs are a disaster for rental car companies. Now, all the so. rental car companies tried to get ahead of the curve. You know, that's that was the hot thing two or three years ago. We're going to do EVs, electric, electric, electric. Guess what? Renters don't want to rent them. They don't know how to use them. They don't know how to charge them. They don't know where a charging station is. So Hertz, years ago, doubled down, said, we're going massive on EVs. And now they're <laughs> trying to get rid of all these EVs because people don't want to rent them. No. And so now what we're seeing is the most popular are hybrids mm -hmm. that are both gas and e and electric. So uh, we, we think that people are frustrated about the EV side because they don't understand them yet. Here's some interesting things. If you've ever, when you get into a car rental today, it's confusing. There's all, you know, depending on the car you get into, I wonder how do you fuel this? How do you start it? How do you put the brake on? How do you put it in reverse? All those things that <laughs> you got to go through. So my idea is that they need to put QR codes on in the car when you get in, you can take your phone, open your camera, and boom, up pops a YouTube that says, hi, welcome, this is a uh, Chevy Bolt, and this is how you uh, drive it, this is how you charge it, blah, 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 it tells you that whole story, and then I would feel better about it. What do you think about that? Yeah, okay. why not? Okay. I mean, I it's a challenge for me to rent uh, an automatic over here in, yeah, in you're the used States. To driving I'm a used stick. to my stick, All so... Right. <laughs> I know. A hey. little manual would be nice. Number four, the, this week's weekly travel, it reads, we are continuing to see domestic air for sales. You know, I don't understand this, Ann. It's in the spring, and we're seeing $59 Southwest fares, Alaska mm -hmm. airs, $59 each way. And the planes seem full to me. Were they full to you when you came over? Absolutely packed. They're, they're full. Yeah. And so I don't know why they're... They're doing airfare sales if they are full. So it tells me there must be some empty seats mm -hmm. or otherwise it wouldn't be silly to do an airfare sale, right? So uh, it's going to be interesting to watch what happens this summer. The next item I have on this week's weekly travel alert reads, renting and operating a car today is so confusing as we've talked about. So I put together a list of YouTube videos. I would like to see the car rental companies put together for me when right. I get in that. First up, driving directions on how and where to return the vehicle with a Google map. Now, I was in Rome. I was bringing back a car to Rome, and National Car Rental, when I checked it out, said, here's a QR code of how to get to the Google map to bring your car rental back. And they explained that whole bit, which but was cool. But it take you really to the garage, to their yeah, like, took parking, me to the... parking of the drop-off parking? Yes. Good, because that's always the stress point. That is. You, know, you try and, to find the sign and, and you gotta where pull am I going. And you got to pull a ticket out and then you yeah. got to put a ticket in. And oh my yeah. gosh, you do that yeah. at three in the morning when you're getting it. on a yeah, flight. It's, so. it's rough. And then the second one I had is how to start the vehicle and remove the parking brake. <laughs> I've been in cars I couldn't yeah. figure out. Do I press the parking button, do pull the parking it? button? Yeah, I know. Do I have to put it in, in you know, drive or reverse to do that? So I want a QR code. Come on, car rental companies. Next one I have, <laughs> how to fuel the vehicle. Also, is it diesel? Is it mm -hmm. gas? Or is it plug-in? How do you, what side of the car is it fueled on? And uh, what, have you ever done an EV car in uh, I haven't, Europe, no. In Europe or in no. the U.S.? No. Are, are there a lot of EV cars in Europe? Depending. So Copenhagen, where I'm born, um, Scandinavia has a lot of okay. uh, EVs. Greece, no. Um, mm -mm. no. I don't think Southern Europe is geared for that at all. You can't even find a parking place, you know. So yeah. where do they put the charging stations and it's yeah. a mess. You know, the thing I didn't write down here that everybody, Americans, I grew up on the farm with a stick shift, you know, tractors and trucks and everything. I was going to say you rode a tractor. Yeah, that's right. Yes. 
And you're in Europe, but everything's a stick shift, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but Americans are all automatics, you yep. know, transmissions. And um, so when you do a stick shift, a lot of Americans wouldn't even know how to run a stick shift without a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And even then, that would probably be uh, really hard yeah. for them. So also be careful when you're renting. Make sure you get an automatic if you're American and yep. don't know how to run a stick. So anyway, with that, I had the, the next item is a short video on how to turn on the headlights in the windshield wipers. Is it the right side, the left side? Do you turn it? Do you push it? Do you pull up? Do you push the button in? All those. Do you have do you have any problems with that, or is it just me? I test it before I start driving because you never know if a rainstorm is hitting you, and because I drive a lot alone in different countries, I want to know. Okay, the next yeah. bullet I had on these are QR codes that I think car rental companies should put on the dash of the car rental to answer all these questions because it's so confusing to rent a car today. The next one. How to set up your phone to Apple CarPlay and Google Maps. Because right. if you're driving, especially in Europe, you want to have that map right there Bigger in front of you. and in front of you. Do you yes. use Car Apple CarPlay? I do. I do it all the time, yes. Okay, so do you plug it in to yeah. the thing? Well, yeah, just Bluetooth, Bluetooth actually. Bluetooth it in? So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's, I'm not the only one that struggles with that. The other thing I found when I rented a car this last time in Europe is my USB cord would not fit into the socket. It it mm -hmm. took a micro yeah. cord to do that. Is that common? Yeah, nowadays. I've never seen that before. Oh, yeah. So is it just European or? In... It is in Europe, Steve. Okay. Yeah. I don't think mm -hmm. it is in the U.S. So, And then the last one I had is how to engage the cruise control. Because, you know, do you have to press the button and press the up button, press the down button. It was interesting when I was driving in... Uh, in uh, Italy last week, that when I pressed the up button, it went up five kilometers per hour, not once. It's tiered, it, yeah. Yeah, in the U.S., we have it go up one. You press one, it goes up one mile per hour. Right. There it goes up five or down five. Right. So do you ever have any problems with the cruise control I issue? don't think we use cruise control much. I mean, I don't know of anyone really using cruise control. It's in all the new cars, but... It's not a European phenomenon to use a cruise control. I don't, okay. you know, we don't drive on a highway for miles or kilometers and kilometers. It's more windy. It's more so sure. you you break all the time. You you sure. you just can't go for an hour west on cruise control. All right, then the last item we have on this week's weekly travel alert, sponsored by Executive Travel. I'm Steve Glenn, joined this week by our special guest Ann Fulby Olson who comes every couple months to Lincoln, Nebraska from Athens, Greece, right? Yep. Now, actually, this time you flew in from where? Copenhagen. I flew in from Copenhagen, yes. Yeah, I'm on KLM. So you KLM, went Amsterdam. Amsterdam into Chicago. Chicago, Chicago, Chicago Lincoln, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wrote down this week the most meaningful escorted yeah. tour, France, Luxembourg, and Belgium. Tell us about this tour, Anne. Absolutely wonderful trip. It's the third time we're doing this, and we're doing it with uh, the Nebraska National Guard Museum in Seward. Got to be with Jerry. Jerry Meyer. Yeah, he All is right. fantastic. Historian and also um, ex-military. Uh, lieutenant so he's uh, hosting the tour um, most meaningful yes this year we are going to celebrate the anniversary of the 80th of uh, from uh, anniversary of d-day in france normandy so Absolute tell us where the tour, tour. goes so to. we start in paris um, and we head out uh West to the Normandy, we base ourselves there for five nights. That's so cool. Yeah, it's fantastic. So it's all the beaches, it's all the the small villages, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we head into France. We go to Saint Lô, uh, okay. liberated by the Nebraskan 140, 134th, sorry, um, and head further down to Nancy. We go into Belgium to Bastogne to uh, Battle of the Bulge, of course. Really? Yep. Yeah. And then we end in uh, we end in the city of Spa in Belgium really? uh, with two days there to relax and just uh, kind of um, take in the trip and um, let it all sink in. It's a very, very emotional trip. Um, we've had two um, tours, fantastic trips. Um, yeah, Jerry is so knowledgeable and, about yes. hi history and especially, you know, the National He's Guard great. and and the role the Nebraska National Guard played in World War II yeah. and the specifically D-Day 
I know I was. I attended one of the tours, the seventy fifth that yep. we had put together back in nineteen. Yeah, yeah, and that was just pretty, uh, pretty special it is. event for. Her. It's a popular trip, and and like you know, we don't go with many people. It's a smaller group of a max twenty five, thirty people. So where can so they call if they want to? Well, they can call straight to the group department if they like to uh, learn more. Or What's sign that up number? So it's eight eight eight. Five four nine one one eight six. Okay, and if that's confusing, you can also call Executive Travel four zero two four three five eight 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 eight. Pretty easy to remember that one. Or visit our website executivetravel.com or womenofthemidwest.com. Mm-hmm. Right. We do have a very nice recording of the tour. Um, if oh, anybody's video? interested, a video. Yes, on under the escorted tour page on the www.executivetravel.com. Oh, great! Website. Well, yes. Ann Fulby Olson, thank you for joining us today on this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert. We, you know, you and I are really blessed. We get to uh, live travel every day. We get to help people have the best. Well, moments of their lives and uh, I'd say that's a pretty good job it is. and we're blessed ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us thank on you. this week's edition of the weekly travel alert uh, we're missing Paul Glenn who's out traveling in Italy hopefully he'll be back on the next edition and we hope to have you join us again as well Thanks and so much. I'm Steve Glenn thank you for joining us